Hey there guys, why are you staring at my floor again? Because I'm making another one of those videos where I show off my awesome video game collection. Because of my three year anniversary a few weeks ago, and 6500 subscribers and all that stuff. And because I just want to brag and show off. So here are the piles from, uh, let's see, we have DS, 3DS, PSP, Wii U, PS1, Wii, Xbox 360, PS2, PS3, also PS3, and GameCube. PS3 is in two piles because I piled them up in one pile originally, but it was so in danger of falling over that I just put them in two piles. And seriously, the PS3 pile was about as tall as me, standing up straight. Seriously, it came up to my chin. And I am uh, about 175 centimeters, and let's see what's the average PS3 case size, maybe like just over a centimeter. That's got to be like a, a, at least 100 PS3 games. Seriously, it came up to my chin, that's like 155 centimeters from the ground maybe, somewhere between that and 160. So that's a lot of games. So let's see, uh, let's start with the smallest pile. Well, let me scoot forward here, which is the PS1 games. Which I, I've never owned a PS1, I've all picked them up in like the last two years or so. We have The Lost World Jurassic Park. It's a 2D platformer and it's really freaking hard. There's like no checkpoint system or something. Might LP this if I can actually beat it. So yeah, we'll see if that happens. Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden Memories. I've actually owned this one for like five or six years, I think. I couldn't I played it on PS2, but I didn't have a PS1 memory card, so I could never keep a save game, and that kinda pissed me off. Then we have another Jurassic Park game, Warpath Jurassic Park, which is a fighting game. With dinosaurs, yes, that is freaking awesome. Sadly, the game is kind of a mess. It's still interesting, though I maybe I'll upload a video of it sometime. And finally, Soul Blade, the first game in the Soul Calibur series. Graphics are quite laughable. I've actually played this on a live stream like a year ago, and it was just, you could count the pixels. It was just crazy. Alright, the next smallest pile, which is actually two piles, uh, we'll do 3DS first. We have Mario Kart 7. If you have a 3DS, you pretty much have to have this. It's like one of the definitive games of the system. I don't, no need to put that on the PS1 pile. We have Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate. I... Yeah, it's for playing this on the go. If I'm at home, I'm gonna play it on the Wii U, of course. But if I'm like on the go, I'll take this along and it's all good fun. And we have Star Fox 64 3D. It's Star Fox 64, one of my favorite games of all time. It's just fun to pick up and play. You can beat it in under an hour. So it's nice to occasionally play it from time to time. Then we have Driver Renegade 3D. I didn't buy this. It was a gift from a co-worker. I don't know how she got it. But uh, I've never played this. Reviews weren't that great from what I've heard. So, yeah. I don't think I'll ever put this in my 3DS. And lastly, we have LEGO Star Wars 3 The Clone Wars, the game I bought when I bought the first 3DS. Because there was really nothing else on it at the time. It's, uh... Yeah, just play the console versions if you have the choice. It's not that good. Next pile, the Wii U pile. Yes, I already own five Wii U games, even though Wii U has no games. First up is this piece of shit. Marvel Avengers Battle for Earth. It's a fighting game with the Avengers and all the other Marvel characters. And it's freaking awful. If you own this and you've played this, then you know how bad this is. It's a port from an Xbox Kinect game. That should give you a nice hint of the game's quality. One of the main gripes I have with it is that it doesn't matter what character you pick because they all play the same. 
Also, there's a whole bunch of non-Avengers characters in there, and several important Avengers characters are left out. For example, I don't really see what... Uh, okay, Spider-Man and Wolverine I can understand, because they're like Marvel poster boys overall, but what the hell do... Characters like the Human Torch and Iceman have to do with the freaking Avengers. Nothing. Where's Ant-Man? Where's, uh... Vision? Where's Quicksilver? And all the other important characters. So yeah, don't buy this. I bought this for like 20 bucks and I regret it. Terribly. Luckily, the rest of the Wii U games I have are actually good ones. Like Mario. Of course, if you have a Wii U, chances are you're gonna have this. It's pretty good, I beat it with all of my friends. Five player mode, it's fun. The player with the gamepad can really screw the others over, it's quite hilarious. I'd say this is one of the system's must-have games. Next up we have Nintendo Land, the glorified tech demo. Kinda similar to what Wii Sports was for the original Wii. Played the multiplayer games with my friends for quite some time, until we've played them all and they all got boring. And I haven't even touched the single player games yet, maybe I should get around to doing that sometime. But as far as tech demos go, it's a pretty good one. And then we have Zombie U. I can't comment on this one because I haven't actually played it yet, even though it came with my Wii U. But yeah, probably should put this in sometime if, you know, I didn't have like 500 other games to choose from. And lastly, the game that's probably had the most playtime on my Wii U, Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate. Buy this, it's good. Buy a Wii U for this game, it's that good. Seriously, do it. Uh, let's see, the next smallest pile is the PSP pile. Now, most of these games aren't actually mine. Well, they are mine, as in I own them, but I didn't buy them. See, I bought my PSP from my nephew, cousin, still not sure what the right word for that is, the son of my uncle. Nephew, cousin, I don't care. So most of these games are games that he bought with it, and I got them with the PSP when I bought it from him. So, yeah. First up, we have Grand Theft Auto Liberty City Stories. I haven't played this, because it's one of his games, but I can imagine what it is, like it's basic Grand Theft Auto, I assume. Then we have Motorstorm Arctic Edge, another one of his games, because he's really into racing games, and I'm really not. I haven't played this, pretty sure I never will. Unless there's like huge demand on your end for seeing Motorstorm Arctic Edge, but I kind of doubt it. Hey oh boy, Tony Hawk game. I clearly couldn't care less about these. Hawk vs. Upside Down Bam Remixed. Right. Two games in one, classic mode and story mode, and I won't play either of them. Four-person wireless multiplayer, 16 levels, four PSP exclusives. Wait, so you mean the PSP version of this is the best version? That is pretty sad. Okay, on to Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker. This is one of my games, because my nephew can't really follow games with a coherent plotline. Seriously, in Grand Theft Auto he doesn't even follow the plot, he just drives around and kills people. But yeah, I will never play this because I have the Metal Gear Solid HD collection, which has the same game, better graphics, on PS3. Also, better controls, because I really don't like the PSP with its one control stick. But yeah, it's Metal Gear. I haven't played this one yet, but it's bound to be good. I mean, come on, it's Metal Gear. Metal Gear is basically seal of quality. Apart from the NES games, those were awful. Another Metal Gear, a Portable Ops Plus. Uh, this one isn't as important to the story, from what I've heard. But I can only play this on PSP with the crappy control, so I don't know if I'll play this. Maybe, maybe not. Star Wars Battlefront Renegade Squadron. Yes, it's a first-person shooter game with only one control stick. It's really not that amazing. Which is a shame, because for some reason after Battlefront 2 there were like a crap ton of other Battlefront games, but they were only on handhelds. It's like, why haven't they made a Star Wars Battlefront 3 yet? Just 
blows my mind. Up next is this Marvel Nemesis Rise of the Imperfects. This is another one of my cousin's games. And I have no clue who these black guys are. So they're glowing with green energy or something. And then there's Spider-Man, Captain America, and a really ugly-looking Iron Man. What kind of game is this, anyway? Oh, I see Venom there, and I think that's Doctor Doom. And Wolverine. So it's basically a Marvel... Oh, here are some other characters. We have, from left to right, some... It kind of looks like Reptile from Mortal Kombat. Then I think that's Elektra. Some... Hooded girl, I don't know, The Thing, Venom, and then three guys who I have no idea who they are. Yeah, this game's probably awful. Up next, Monster Hunter Freedom Unite. It's Monster Hunter, so it's bound to be good, but I just can't play it because the PSP's controls are too horrible for this. Seriously, you have to contort your hand into some weird claw shape, and it's just... It really starts to hurt after, like, five minutes. It's just a shame, though, because I would have loved to play this. This is, like, the most expansive Monster Hunter game before Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate came out, I think. I think that is just a bit bigger than this one. Not sure, though. And then one I bought recently after playing a lot of PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale and liking one of the characters in it, Medieval Resurrection. Starring Sir Daniel Fortescue, who none of you probably know who that even is. He was in a couple of PlayStation 1 games, like two of them, and this is the PSP port of the first game. I want to play this, because I like the character in PlayStation All-Stars, but it's on PSP with the PSP shitty controls. So I'm not really sure about this one. Uh, let's see what's the uh, next pile is DS. Alright, start this off right with Pokemon. Yeah, it's Pokemon. It's basic Pokemon. Everyone who has a DS has Pokemon. I mean, come on. Uh, oh, this. If you can't read this, this is a game that is basically like a driver's exam theory practice thingamajiggy on DS. I got this from my parents when I was uh, studying for my driver's test. Yeah, it's strange if they actually made like a DS game out of it. I don't, I didn't even remember this to be quite honest, I just found it in the pile. Yeah, interesting. Don't think that was released in the US, considering it's all in Dutch. Then we have Pokemon White version, it's more Pokemon. Pokemon White version 2, more Pokemon. Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon, it's Fire Emblem on DS, but from what I've heard, this one is by far the worst in the series, and I must say, I didn't like it a whole lot either. I like the Game Boy Advance ones I've played a lot better than this. Then we have Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, the first Phoenix Wright game. I actually own the entire series, and I own both all Phoenix Wright games on, the, on both DS and on Wii. It's a good game, story's good, check this one out if you have time and money and a system you can play it on, it's really good. Metroid Prime Pinball, and I forgot to take the sticker off. I bought this on a whim because I didn't have anything to play in the train ride to college, I guess. It's alright, I haven't played it that much, but it's probably fairly decent. Ace Attorney Apollo Justice, the fourth game in the series, I think, fourth or fifth, starring some new guy who's not nearly as cool as Phoenix Wright. Uh, I still need to beat this one, I think I was stuck in, like, case three or something. I need to get around to that again. And then we have Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney Trials and Tribulations. Prince Boot 21 just finished an LP on this, like, a week ago. So go and watch that. It's good. Interesting story. Probably the best story out of the entire series. Uh, text all in Dutch. Hmm, it's not... Well, they do that sometimes. Pokemon Black. Yes, more Pokemon. Surprise, more Pokemon. Pokemon is just dominating the handhelds. Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, the game that never ends. Seriously, you can keep playing that forever and ever. 
More Pokemon, Pokemon Dash, and actually bought, paid 45 bucks for this piece of crap. Yes, not all Pokemon games are good. This is not one of them. Pokemon Diamond. Yes, it's more Pokemon. Uh, oh, here we go. Kirby Mouse Attack. I think this is called Kirby Squeak Squad in the US. I don't know why they changed the title like that. But it's a Kirby game. It's pretty fun. Played through that several times, I think. Then we have Mario Kart DS. Another DS game that everyone owned. Because it's Mario Kart. It's great. And there's some sort of stain on there that I'm not sure what that is. Looks like tomato soup. Why would there be tomato soup on a Mario Kart DS game? What happened there? It will be a mystery for the ages. Then we have Star Fox Command. It's alright. Controls are a little strange. Plays a lot better on 3DS though. You can use the control pad to control it better. So if you have a 3DS, or if you have this, you should probably play it on a 3DS. It feels much better. And lastly, Brain Training. I think my mom bought this actually. Sure as hell, my brain doesn't need training. It's good enough as it is. He said before he was sealed away in an insane asylum for the rest of his life. Uh, let's see, which pile is the... Xbox pile is the smallest. Drag that over here. Oh boy. Most of these games aren't mine. Again, my little brother had the Xbox for a whole lot of time. Until he bought a PS3, he wisened up, he learned that Xbox is crap. And he sold it to me for like 70 bucks. Fairly good price, I guess, if it wasn't the Xbox that I got for my birthday like four years earlier. He swiped it, stole it, whatever. Let's get to some games. Yes, Halo 3. If you have an Xbox, you probably have this. It's alright, I guess. I haven't played Halo 1 or 2, so I really don't know the entire story, but this one was fairly cool. Halo Reach. I borrowed this from a friend to record it for an LP, and it's sitting on my hard drive, and why haven't I done it yet, I don't know. Might be coming soon. Might also not be coming soon. Skyrim. You have to have Skyrim somewhere on any console it's on, because it's apparently a great game. I've played, like, a lot of it. I've recorded, like, 17 episodes, but it's such a long game that I'm not sure I'll ever LP it, because it would take two freaking years. Yeah, I'm not gonna sully my Xbox with this shit. Unless there's, like, really big demand for it. Mass Effect. Apparently this is really good. I haven't played it yet. I actually owned the entire trilogy on PS3 and Xbox. I owned it on Xbox first because Mass Effect 1 wasn't on PS3 yet, but then they come out with the entire trilogy and I'm like, eh, I don't want this on Xbox anymore, it's on multiple discs because Xbox sucks like that. Also, bonus disc. It includes bonus episode, behind-the-scenes documentaries and more because everyone cares about behind-the-scenes documentaries. Oh yeah, this is interesting. I think this is the special edition of Mass Effect 2. That's what it says here, Collector's Edition. I picked this up second-hand, because it was just sitting in a store and there was no regular copy of Mass Effect 2, so I figured I'd buy this. Haven't played it yet, though. Probably never will on Xbox. And, of course, Mass Effect 3. Pretty sure that's like a sword arm thing or something. I can't imagine it being anything else. So, yeah, if I'll play this, I'll play it on PS3. And even sexier. Seriously? Don't know what that's about. Fable 2. It's a pretty good game. This is one of the first Xbox 360 games I owned. And my character ended up being a fat, evil, maniacal son of a bitch, kind of. So it's just like in real life. More or less. Marvel Ultimate Alliance. It's an action RPG with Marvel characters, and it's pretty good, I guess. Let's see, who do we have here? We have, I think that's Elektra, Hugh Jackman. That doesn't look like Chris Hemsworth, but I guess it's still Thor. The Thing, Spider-Man, of course, with his weird hand gesture, like he's going to a Metallica concert. 
Ooh, Ghost Rider. I like Ghost Rider. He's awesome. Even though every movie he's in, or has been in, has been awful. Captain America without the wings on his head. And a kind of strange looking Iron Man. Yeah, not the best box art ever, I think. Mirror's Edge. It's a unique game, I guess. My little brother bought this. I think I played it for like half an hour or something before I got bored. It's kind of a first-person shooter without the shooting. I just run and jump a lot. Battlefield Battle Company 2 Limited Edition. My little brother's game. I don't really care for military FPS's, so let's get that out of here. Gears of War. The second of Xbox's exclusive franchises that actually matter. Pretty much, there are only two franchises that are exclusive to Xbox that matter. This and Halo. A Nightmare from Below, A Hero from Within. Cryptic text features. Yeah, it's... I haven't actually played this yet, but I think I should. Because sure, it's like one of the only good games on Xbox. Turok. The gritty reboot of the N64 classic franchise. With dinosaurs. And you kill them with a machine gun, a bow and arrow, and a knife. Uh, I'd actually kind of like this one. Maybe I should LP this. This is pretty fun. Yeah, I'm popping this in right after I'm done with this. Dead Rising. I figured since I've played Dead Rising 2 off the record, I should pick up the original and do that first, but the original is not that great from what I've heard. Well, it's fairly good, but the Survivor AI is like dumb as shit, and it's kind of boring. But yeah, look, there's Frank West, a mall full of zombies. They went shopping, now they're rotten. Lawnmower death. If you can pick it up, you can use it. Hundreds of items to cause mayhem with include sporting goods, gardening tools, and kitchenware. That's nice. Maybe I'll play it sometime. The Gears of War 2 bundle copy, not for resale. And GameStop doesn't give a crap, they'll resell it anyway. Uh, what have we here? Halo 3 ODST. Yes, I'm not exactly sure what relation this has to Halo 3. Why couldn't they just name it Halo ODST? What does it have to do with Halo 3? Nothing. The hell, Microsoft? Prepare to drop. Yeah. And it comes with a second disc. The complete Halo 3 multiplayer experience. Oh, maybe that's why it's called Halo 3 ODST. Yeah, I remember this. You get like a single player campaign that lasts for two hours and is not that great and then you have just the same multiplayer as Halo 3 and they still charge you 60 bucks for this when it came out. Battlefield 3 Limited Edition. Again, my little brother's game. Don't really care about it. But I see people in my PSN friends list play it from time to time. Yeah, my little brother's game is, again, I do not care about soccer. One bit. Oh look, he bought it three years earlier as well. Project Gotham Racing 3, again, one of my little brother's games, because I do not care about racing games. At least not with real cars. I like F-Zero and the Star Wars racing game and stuff, but I really don't like this. If I want to drive a car, I'll drive my actual car, damn it. Star Wars The Force Unleashed. Oh, this was a fun game. Sadly, because LucasArts is bankrupt now, or Disney shut it down or something, we will never get a Force Unleashed 3. Which makes me sad. <sighs> Jesus Christ. What a waste of money. Ooh, boobies the game. Yeah, I'm not very good at this game. I actually played it for... Uh, the final boss whooped my ass for like 45 minutes before I just gave up. Let's see, what does it say here? The critically and commercially acclaimed Dead or Alive series once again rises to new levels in Dead or Alive 4 with more speed, power, and new characters, never before seen most beautifully detailed interactive levels, stunning costumes, the ever-lovely DOA ladies, and raw head-to-head -head pumping excitement all while pioneering a new generation of gaming for the new fighting game era. Yeah, they should just say this game has bouncing boobs and then just be done with it. Because that's really all that the game's about anyway. Other than the volleyball spin-off. Soul Calibur 4 with the most random guest character ever. 
Seriously, my friend told me that Darth Vader and Yoda were going to be in Soul Calibur 4 like years ago. I didn't believe him. He said, no, no, really, man, look it up on the internet. So I did, and it was actually true. I couldn't imagine, couldn't believe it. It was just... Do you really... Is Star Wars the first thing you think of when you think Soul Calibur? I mean, sure, they've had some random guest characters. They had Link... Hi Hachi and Spawn are all kind of random, I guess, but Yoda and Darth Vader, seriously? Mortal Kombat vs. DC Universe. I've done an LP of this. It was pretty good. Again, a kind of random matchup. But it worked. There's the Joker blowing up Scorpion. And Batman beating up Sub Zero. It's alright. It's not the greatest fighting game out there, but it's not horrible either. Okay, you've seen this on my channel, I imagine. It's like one of my best viewed LPs ever. Uh, it's a fairly fun game if you're into the show, I guess, but I don't really see any reason to play this if you don't like the show itself. And I kind of like the show, and I, this is actually the only game in the Ben 10 franchise that actually got it right. Just have 10 aliens you can transform into at any time. First game had five aliens. Ultimate Alien game and Omniverse game have this weird system where you have to select four aliens for a level and you can switch on the fly, but you have to go into like a menu to change it and stuff. This game just had all aliens. You had to cycle through them just like in the show. This is the only game that got it right. So far. Probably going to be more Ben 10 games in the future anyway. Another one of my little brother's games, Need for Speed Pro Street. I don't see what so interesting about driving cars in a video game. Sure, I mean, kids can drive an actual car, so I can kind of see why they would want to in a game. And lastly, this. God, what is wrong with your face, whoever the hell you are? Kind of looks like he's in prison and someone slipped him some surprise prison. Like he dropped the soap or something. I imagine that's the kind of face you make when something like that happens to you. And he's just like standing there like, oh shit dude, I'm not gonna get involved in that. I have no clue who those two clowns are. Probably soccer players who get paid way too much for what they do. Alright, half an hour in and we still have the biggest piles to go. Yay, this is gonna be like an hour long video. Come on, get over here. Pile of PS2 games. Now you might notice the interesting golden box here. Yes, what could that be? Well, if you've seen like any previous collection video I did, you probably already know because I've had that game forever. But first up, destroy all humans. Evil aliens come to go to town on people. One giant step on mankind. I like that catchphrase, it's fun. 9 out of 10 from PlayStation 2 Official Magazine UK. So it's probably good. Still need to play this. I really want to, but again hundreds of games and not very much time so yeah oh here's some other scores 9 out of 10 86 percent 8 out of 10 5 out of 5 83 percent four uh, four and a half out of five so the review scores for this are pretty good up next we have ghost rider it's kind of like god of war from what i've read on the internet Hack and slash game, sort of. Starring Ghost Rider, and it's not a movie game, actually. It says here, albeit in Dutch, it's a brand new story from comic book geniuses Garth Ennis and Jimmy, Jimmy Palmiotti. Probably family of an Italian mobster or something. Uh, yeah, I haven't played this, but maybe I should, because I like Ghost Rider. I mean, just look at him. He will stare into your soul. And then burn it for all eternity. Oh, this game. Uh, yeah, I don't really know what this is. I bought this on a whim because it seemed really interesting. I mean, look at the box art. We have this sort of uh, dragon thing fighting this other dragon thing on what seems to be the playing board of the board game Colonists of Catan. Not sure if you know that game over there in the U.S., but that's what this makes me think of. What is it? It's basically a mix of a monster fighting game 
and some sort of chess. It's kind of like Yu-Gi-Oh! Duelist of the Roses, I guess, in that you move monsters around on a board and then when you fight, you actually have to fight instead of watch a cutscene or something. So yeah, I probably should pop this in sometime. It could be really interesting. To say the least. Star Wars Battlefront 2. Ah, fun childhood memories. I've put so many hours into this game. Shame that there will probably never be a Battlefront 3. I don't know why, I mean this game sold amazing and FPS's are all the rage these days so why the hell wouldn't they make a Battlefront 3? I just can't imagine why they wouldn't want to. War of the Monsters. I saw a commercial for this back in the day and I really wanted it but I never got a chance to buy it. It's you're in a, a city with giant monsters beating the crap out of each other and the city. Yeah. That's basically all there is to it. Kind of uh, all the fun homages to old monster movies. Like, that's obviously King Kong. And some robot from a Japanese anime or something. And all the other stuff like Godzilla and the Blob and... Aliens and all that stuff. Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. One again, again one of my little brother's games. Although I did play this with him a whole bunch of times in multiplayer, this actually had multiplayer. It wasn't very good multiplayer, but still multiplayer. You don't see that in GTA too often. Battlefield 2 Modern Combat. Kind of makes me wonder what Battlefield 1 was like, because I've never ever seen or even heard of that. Though I imagine there has to be one. So, yeah, I don't think I'll ever play this. I mean, come on, it's... Ages old, it's really old, it's Battlefield. Probably won't like it anyway. Oh, this one should uh, really stir up something in you Southern Americans. The Dukes of Hazard, Return of the General Lee. Ah, uh, yes, the Dukes of Hazard, that show about the rednecks with the Confederate flag car, which was number one, and it was all like, always like jumping off bridges and crashing into haystacks and all that other stuff and I don't know who that chick is she looks kind of old come on focus focus okay don't focus oh yeah you had Bo, Luke, Daisy and the rest of the TV cast you're in for a good old-fashioned joyride Duke style includes bonus interviews which no one cares about so yeah I think this game actually had a story. Uh, are any of you in crazy Dukes of Hazard fans? Would there be any interest in seeing this? Because again, it is a racing game, but it's not a standard racing game, I guess. So maybe I would like it if I had any knowledge of the TV show it's based on. I do know there was this cop who could never do anything right. And there was this other fat guy in the white suit who was always chastising him for it. Yu-Gi-Oh! Duelist of the Roses. Yeah, I've LP'd this like years ago, and I am actually working on a replay of this because it's such a fun game. And also, I kind of cheated last time by bringing in all the cards from a save file that I already beat the game with. So I want to do a legit playthrough of this. It's not going very well. Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks. This is not a fighting game, it's more of a an adventure beat-em-up kind of game. It's an interesting Mortal Kombat spin-off, I guess, starring Liu Kang and guy with the sombrero, whose name I don't remember, but it was very similar to Liu Kang. Monster Hunter, the game that started this series. It's kind of an inferior version of Monster Hunter Freedom Unite, I guess, but the controls are better because it's on PS2. Then we have Spider-Man 2, one of the best movie games of all time. Yes, one of the few movie games that does not suck. I've seen the movie, it was fairly decent. I'm not the biggest Spider-Man fan out there, but... I've seen some footage of this and it looked really cool, so I picked it up. Then we have another movie game of Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith. It's... It actually doesn't really follow the movie all that much. It kind of presents an alternate take on it where Anakin can use Force Lightning for some reason. 
Uh, yeah, if there are any Star Wars fans on this channel, I might actually LP this, because it's really quite an interesting take on Revenge of the Sith. Which is probably my favorite Star Wars movie. Oh, this brings back childhood memories. If you're about my age, like born in the early 90s, then you will have probably seen this movie as a kid and loved it to death. I know I have. Do you remember this movie? There's a game of it. And it's actually quite fun. This movie, like, was my childhood. I've seen it so many times, I think I wore the videotape out. Yes, videotapes, that's another thing of the past. All you youngsters don't know what videotapes are anymore. Uh, so yeah, you have got, you've got the protagonist and a monkey and that evil dinosaur thing. I should play this soon. For the nostalgia factor. Soul Calibur 3. The introduction of the first black guy in the franchise. And then they promptly dropped him in Soul Calibur 5. And no one really gave a damn. First, also first one to introduce character customization, which was pretty cool. I've put so many hours into that. Oh, here comes the Golden Box. Another movie game, another one that's not half bad. It's Peter Jackson's King Kong, the limited collector's edition. The box art of this is really cool and also really shiny. The back is, however, just completely empty, which is kind of a shame. Another game based on a movie. Well, based on a movie franchise, not so much one particular movie. It's Jaws Unleashed. It's kind of GTA with Jaws. At least that's what the reviews I've read on the internet read. Uh, I sh should play this soon, because it seems really fun. Just swimming around as a shark, eating everything in sight. Who wouldn't want to play a game like that? Destroy All Humans 2, the sequel. And I haven't even played the first game yet, so I still haven't played this either. But Make War and Not Love. This is set in the 1960s, I think, so with all the hippies and stuff, I can already see how this could be a pretty fun game. Up next is... The Lego Star Wars 2 Original Trilogy. It's Lego Star Wars, it's fun. But... Yeah... It was alright, the first LEGO Star Wars game was kind of bad, but this one improved on it quite a lot. Oh boy, this. He's like, yay, we won, I scored a goal, now I get paid 50 million for doing absolutely nothing. And this guy's like, ugh, I'm kinda sad, I ran out of drugs and hookers and... I don't know. Soccer's dumb. Grand Theft... Uh, the Gran Turismo, I was going to say Grand Theft Auto 4 for a moment there. Though that would have made this game a lot better. Uh, again, one of my little brother's games. It's like a driving simulator. That is all there is to it, really. Soul Calibur 2, with Haihachi Mishima from Tekken as the guest character. Uh, yeah, pretty good game. Love the series. Series I don't like that much. Tekken 5. I have no clue how to play this game. Final boss beats my ass. Broken as hell. I'm not that good at it. The controls are confusing as all hell. So I'm not going to play that. If you don't mind. The first Lego Star Wars. Nothing to say about that. The first Star Wars Battlefront. Good game. Could have used this story so that I can actually LP it. But I've again synced so many hours into this. Good memories. Ooh, Time Splitters, Future Perfect. It's time to split with Vin Diesel lookalike, with weird eyes. Also guns. Yeah, if you've seen the LP I've done of this, you know that I love this game. I still play it with my friends on a regular basis. Because it's just that good. There needs to be a Time Splitters 4. Why do all the good games never get sequels, yet Call of Duty gets a sequel every year? Also Assassin's Creed, although those are still decent from what I've heard. Star Wars Race of Revenge, you've seen the LP of this, I assume. It's based on the racing in Star Wars Episode 1, and it's good. Pretty good. Metal Gear Solid 2. I've done an LP of this, like the Metal Gear series. 
and this was the special edition, I think. There was at least some sort of bonus disc with it. Oh yeah, it says here. Plus bonus DVD disc. I think I've actually watched that one once. Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. Also includes a bonus DVD. Which again, I think I've watched that once. And lastly, you've already seen it, but whatever. It's another soccer game with Smug Black Guy. A uh, Latino guy with messed up hair, and I don't know who that is. Is that David Beckham? Kind of looks like him, I guess. Then again, I have no clue who David Beckham is and what he looks like. Also, he's doing something... Trying to do a soccer move without the... Oh, no, there's the ball. Yeah, why do people buy this every year? It's like... Minimal changes, like maybe slight graphical improvements, some players are switched to different teams, but I really don't see why you should buy the same game every year. Can't they just like release one big patch every year that changes the players around, but that's because that's how I would do this. Sure, it wouldn't make a lot of money, but it would actually be fair to the people. <sighs> well... This is all I've done, but this is all that remains, so I'm probably going to end it here and do the Wii, GameCube, and PS3 in a second video, because I really need to go and get a drink now after 45 minutes of non-stop talking. Oh wait, I have a drink right here. <sighs> Much better. Still, I'm going to take a break, so... Part 2 will be up soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.